Pastor, you could be seated. Well, we thank the Lord. Welcome to Dove Church. We are in the midst of just praising Jesus. Thank you for looking in on us and we reverence God. This, what is known as Christmas Sunday, the Sunday before Christmas and we we thank God for being here. We thank God for you looking in. We thank God for those in person and worship service today. And we, we love God today. Amen. And we bless him. We thank you for your support all this year and continue to do that. And we love you. This is good ground. We bless God for you. And pray his riches into your life today. And with that, we're going to say our confession. Amen. Amen. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand or your phone or wherever your Bible is. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you and we give you all the glory and we declare there is none like you. We thank you for this Christmas Sunday. We worship you and we reverence you and we praise you. And God, we almost don't have the words to express how great you are. How marvelous you are. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. For your loving kindness and your tender mercies. How good you are to us. How good you are to us. How you kept us how you kept us. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. 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 Thank you, team. Thank you. Bless you. We thank you for your love you, you've shown to us in this service and special giftings. And we just, we, we thank you. Special shout out to, uh, to, uh, to Anthony Gordon. I know he wasn't feeling good today and he pressed his way and came on. And I kind of messed with him when he first got here. He was so nice. All he said was, here you come. <laughs> so we, 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 we thank God for your press, man. I appreciate that. Amen. 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 How I many know sometimes there's a blessing in the pressing? Amen. 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 So expect to be blessed in the press. And the reason why I had you read, the, the, and we did the responsive reading that we did today, is that I'm going to talk about the light of Christmas. The light of Christmas today. The light of Christmas. And we're, we, we, we in, in previous lesson, we talked about Mary and Elizabeth and how she had run to Elizabeth and, 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 and went to her house to tell her that she was going to have a child. And, and Elizabeth was already pregnant with John the Baptist by some three months already. And, and, and so when, when she met her cousin, uh, uh, both ba John the Baptist leaped in the womb. Uh, uh, he was filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb. And so, so but we're going to go beyond, we're going to go 
to the story previous to that where where John is ready to come on the scene and some of the supernatural events that happen in his life that that in turn intersected with the life of Jesus Christ and crossed over and so we find that 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 uh, and and let me let me let me start talking about light a little bit before we get to talking about that that special uh, uh, story or summing it up in the be- in the book of beginnings genesis god gives light its assignment as it pertains to the earth when everything was dark and chaos was everywhere God said, let there be light. So light comes to get rid of chaos. Wickedness hates the light. It hates the light of exposure. Roaches hate the light. Genesis 1 and 3 says, then God said, all he did was say. He didn't step anywhere. He said it. Let there be light. Well, when God said light, the next thing he said, and there was light. So light is in God. God is light. And everything God does produces light. Everything he does produces light. It's, it's funny how you, you get illustrations and things. And the other day I walked in and there was a bright light over in the corner of the basement of the church in front of the plants. And, and I knew, you know your people by their work. And I knew Elder Leroy had been in the basement and put that light in front of them plants. It was a grow light. And it was so so bright. And it was pretty. It was it had this nice color to it. It just lit up that whole corner in the basement down there with the two plants. They normally sit here. They were they, they, you, I had been earlier and they were looking a little peaked. A little, a little sorry. But by the time I got back Friday and that light was on them them rascals had revved up. They were looking better. So light gives life. You want to live, stay in the light. Light is so crucial we find it all through scripture. Almost in every book. It is a needed constancy in every aspect of our life. At times when I'm traveling by car and, and, and we're on the highway, sometimes you hit a detour and you have to come off and hit the roads to travel. And I hate that because on the roads is one white line dividing the right side from the left side. Make sure your glasses are adjusted so you won't cross over the line and think you're driving on the British side of the street. The reason why I dislike the roads on the side of the highway when they tell you to get off in detour is because most of the time there are no lights. And, 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 I, and I dislike night driving for that because there are not many lights beside your headlamp on your car. So light is crucial to you getting to where you need to be. And, and it's crucial to your, your mindset too. And your safety. And your peace of mind. So... God understands the necessity of light. For earth to be like heaven, and let me zoom forward, and I'm going to keep, I'm going to zoom forward and come back. 
after Jesus, you know, born past this scene and everything, and 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 he in, in the Lord's prayer, he said, as it is in heaven, he wanted it to be the same on earth. Amen. On earth as it is in heaven. So in order for God to make earth like heaven, he had to send light in. Because heaven is all light. Now, everything of God is a product of light. Everything of God is a product of light. Now let's go into this, this, this story of John the Baptist. This birth sequence of John the Baptist and Jesus laid out the redemptive plan of God through overlapping events. John is so crucial at this point because he, he would become the forerunner of Jesus. That's why I had you to read that. Uh, 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 John was not the light. Because <laughs> sometimes you can get confused at where you are and think that's the one. And they're only telling you about the one to come. So the scripture made it clear that he came to bear witness to the light, but he was not. But he was important. He was important. So, looking at Luke 1, 11 through 17, we're not going to read it all. Pastor's going to sum it up. Elizabeth's husband, Zacharias, the priest, is visited by an angel while performing his priestly duties. He, he has a, a, a time stint where he comes and offers incense at the altar. And while he's doing that, he notices while he's praying, he looks up and he sees something standing on the side of him. And it must have been a terrible looking scene or something so awesome until, until the, the, the angel that he saw told him, uh, Gabriel said, 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 fear not. Fear not. Everybody think angels are these beautiful, wispy characters that you just don't fear. But when you really see an angel for real, they might cause you to just go into shock. Especially one of these type of guys. They just not play things. They, 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 they some supernatural being second to none. And, 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 and he was standing there and he said, he said, don't get upset, fear not. And he came to bear good news. But good news is a matter of whether you, you interpret it as good news. To somebody, you tell them they're going to have a baby, that's not good news. Some of y'all laughing, you know what I mean. That wouldn't be good news. But the angel came to tell Zacharias that the prayers that he and Elizabeth had prayed had been heard. And that, and, and just so they wouldn't miss it, he said, she's going to have a baby and you, this is what you name him. You can't name him little T.T. or Tutu. His name is John. Wow. Well, Zacharias had a problem. He was up in age. And I want to tell some of y'all, age is only a problem for y'all. Not for God. He, he said, he, he was up in age and, 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 and his wife was up in age. Now this is before she was pregnant. This is before she was pregnant with the, he, he, we up in age. And, 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 and God didn't play. It was like, he doubted and because he doubted, 
God said, I'm going to stop you from killing yourself. How did he do that? If you keep on talking, you're going to kill yourself. <laughs> Some of us, he could, he could help if he could shut us up for a minute. J just shut up for five days. Don't say a word. And so he said, you'll not speak again until the child is born. You won't talk again. Because you doubt it. The good news that I came to bring you, 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 I brought you good news and you sit your situation before me. Sometime you need to let God be God because he already knows the situation. If he answers your prayer, when the answer comes, don't doubt. Many times it's never like you thought it was going to be. Oh, I didn't get even an amen there. You know why? Because in your head when you ask, you set up the way it ought to come. <laughs> now, I gotta come straight down here. Come over here. Up the stairs and stand in front of me. And God says, I'm going to send it to that door. Now you get to the door. When you play, pray. Believe you receive it when you pray. And if you believe them things, you will have. When you believe you receive it, when? Do you have it when you pray? Is it always in manifestation when you pray? No. But when you pray, believe you receive it. Let me go on. Elizabeth had the baby. And at the time of his circumcision, seven days later, the first thing John did, he was so glad that he could talk again. He began to praise and worship God. And then the Bible said, it's all in this same scripture passage in, in, in Luke 11, in Luke 1, first chapter of Luke. He said he was filled full of the Holy Ghost and the first thing out of his mouth. Well, see, when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you don't have time. See, see he didn't have time to do any other talking. I, God, you, I couldn't talk. For a whole, all this time, I couldn't tell little bit. I loved her. I couldn't tell nobody nothing. All I could do was swing the incense on the altar. That's all I can do. Sometimes all God wants you to do is show him that you love him and shut up. Just show him that you appreciate him and shut up. Stop trying to figure it out, but let him do it and shut up. And the first thing he did after being filled with the Holy Ghost, he opened his mouth and he prophesied. Turn to, 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 to uh, 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 Luke 1, 67 through 79. We're going to read all of this. Because in this prophecy is mentioned both babies and what they would do. Both babies. Luke 1, 6, 6, 7. 
through 79. You there? Does it say blessed? Okay. Let me, let me go all the way, way up to the top. Yes. Now his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied saying. Blessed is the Lord God of Israel. Then he went on to say for he has visited and redeemed his people. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us. This first part is talking about Jesus. He's raised up a horn of salvation for us. In the house of his servant David, Jesus' lineage. He was an offspring of David. So was his parents. And he spoke by the mouth of the holy prophets who have been since the world began. He's been talking about his coming since the world began. Oh. And the first prophecy about Jesus came in Genesis. My God. And then verse uh, 71 says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Somebody say help is coming. Help has come. Woo. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. So in his prophecy he's saying I'm telling you everything I promised you is coming to pass. Say amen. amen. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we being delivered from the hand of our enemy might serve him without fear. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And you child. Talking about John at this point. And you child. Would be called a prophet of the highest. For you will go before the face of the Lord. To prepare his way. Wow. Wow. Both babies in one prophecy. To give knowledge of salvation to his people. He said, John, I'm sending you to tell them, the, to give them a knowledge of salvation. So when the one that saves come, you can get him. Ooh, ooh. Wow. By the remission of their sin, through the tender mercy of God, with which, and, and here we go into Jesus. Jesus. With which the day spring on high has visited us. Everybody say day spring. day spring. To give light to shine. To, I'm sorry. To, to give light in those, to those who sit in darkness and the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. Jesus. Jesus. Now, let me back up. Verse 17 30, and, and 79, it says, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of our God with which the day spring from on high has visited us. 
the day spring from on high. Well, when I read this, I said, this was an interesting title. It's a title and a name and a, and a metaphor. Day spring. A metaphor is when a word or phrase is applied to an object. The object being spoken of here is the promised Messiah. Jesus who would soon arrive. Well, the NIV translates the word for day spring as the rising sun. The New American Standard Version translate it as the sunrise from on high. The word sunrise is capitalized in the NASB or New American Standard Bible because it refers to the Son of God who would rise like the sun to bring light to all men. So the day spring is a new type of light that has never been on the earth before. It was greater than even any type of light that preceded it. But it matched what God said let there be light. Fo follow me, follow me. When God said, let there be light, he was talking about, I'm talking about every light, every place until it gets to the light that is the light that is the light of heaven in the earth in the person of my son. He is the day spring. He is the, the light that's greater than any other light that has been reflective in the earth because he's coming to bring forth a new day. I kept saying, golly. I never looked at light like that. I said, God, this is amazing. Malachi 4 and 2. It says, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like, what kind of calves? Star fed calves. God said, this light that I send is going to be the provision to your life. And you'll be like a stall-fed calf. What is a stall-fed calf? It is an animal that doesn't have to work. They just stay in the stall and eat. How many of you could be a fat calf right now? Have all your provisions met without working? Because you dared entertain the light. No, no, you're not out there. I'm, 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 I'm trying to, to, to work this in because I want you to, to get it. Because there are some places in God that, that you can acquire, that you can get to, and it won't be by the sweat of your bra or the work of your hand. It's just because you're in the light of his life. Yeah. And he'll fatten you up. Fat means health. It means wealth. It means provision. It means satisfied. It means I got what I need. It means all of my needs are met. And I didn't even leave the stall. 
I didn't leave out to do nothing. Come on, you ought to give him a prayer. Because God wants to provide for you that tough. You got talent, but you're working two jobs to get one good money or a piece of money that pays some of the bills. But a fatted calf is not worried about any bills. Now I'm trying to help you get yourself because all of their needs are met. They don't have to go anywhere because why? Everything I need is taken care of. Somebody ought to give him a praise. It's all about the light. That's what Malachi is saying. But, but, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise. That means the day spring is going to bring daybreak. Not only are you going to be fatted, but before he said you'll be fatted, he said with healing in his wing. Yeah. You won't be fat and sick. So health is wealth. Feeling good is a part of the plan. Being healed is a part of the covenant. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. God, don't get no glory in sickness. I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm, get it out your mouth. Declare you well. Yes. I had a friend the other day. She said something and it just stuck with me and it just came flooding back just now. She said, she said she was feeling real bad and she had something else to do. And she said she spoke to her body and she said, no. I'm not going to do this. You're not going down on me now. I got too much to do. I got too much to do. She said, no, no, no. I'm going to feel all right. She said, she's feeling terrible. She said, I'm going to feel all right. And I'm going on. And I'm going to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do what I got to do next. Watch me. I'm getting ready to start walking. I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to move to the next place. I'm, and you know, after a while, she moved to that place. And the next place after that. And the next place after that. You can have what you say. If you believe. I'm sorry, I can't hardly get it out. I, I really can't see out my glasses real well, but I but 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 you're gonna get this today. John 1, 4, and 5. And I read that earlier when we did that responsive reading thing. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. So life and light go together. That's why those plants downstairs respond to light. They bring life. And the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend it. That means the darkness cannot handle light. That's why new telescopes are watching light that, that is traveling and has been traveling for thousands of years through darkness. When the Bible says darkness does not comprehend it, it means darkness cannot overtake the light. So anybody that says they don't need Jesus, you're saying, I'd rather stay in darkness. Because if you've got Jesus, you can overtake the darkness. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Not only are we overcomer, we are overtakers too. 
also walk in the light. Because once light show up, how close is the star? But you see it through darkness. How close is the moon? You see it through darkness. Because the darkness can't comprehend. It can't handle it. <laughs> it, it, it can't handle it. The worst thing you can have is darkness at night. In your bedroom and naked feet. Anybody had a dark experience and your foot connected with something in the dark and and I know, I know, I know you blessed the Lord, didn't you? You blessed the Lord, didn't you? God! Amen. You But I want to tell you today, the reason why you need to walk in the light is because the darkness can't handle it. And you can't be in dark and light at the same time. Because the darkness can't comprehend the light. That's why when light shows up, it, 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 the darkness has to flee. If you're in a rough place, in the darkness of depression, if you're in the darkness of abandonment, if you're in the darkness of neglect, you shine the light of his love inside of that. And, 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 and that darkness has to flee. I, I, was, I, was, I was upset over, over a young man 40 years old with the world in his hand. By the name of Twitch and, and, and a, a great dancer and, and great career, producer, doing things everywhere. Oh, wonderful family, wonderful smile, nice looking guy. Just, you know, well, what would you have to die for? Well, well, there was no light to comprehend the darkness. Yes. Yes. You got to get in the light. Yes. Yes. Because if you don't get in the light, you'll be in the darkness. And what's in the darkness? Depression, upset, degradation, destruction, every wickedness. Come on, come on, go. You better decide I'm going to walk in the light. Because light is where life is. <laughs> oh, you're not ready for that light? The first thing you do when you get depressed is you want to close out everything. Close the drapes. Turn the lights off. Turn. But get up and walk in the light. Go in the, in the light book. Can't do nothing but get you a, a thesaurus or somewhere, a dictionary, Bible dictionary, run down everything where it said light. And when you get into to a dark place, just start. You said there was light. You told me to walk in the light. You told me that, that the life was the light of men. Then you told me that Jesus is the light of the world and then you told me that that I was a light <laughs> a city set on a hill cannot be hid come on come on you told me that <laughs> you told me that in that city there's no night there because he is the light of that place <laughs> come on it ain't in the darkness <laughs> you better get up and get yourself in the light today Also in the light, you stay confused about everything. I'm confused. Where to switch? (laughs) 
God is a light. Jesus is a light. The Holy Spirit is a light. He will lead you. He will guide you. Do you want him to? You are without excuses. I'm sorry, I'm so off of this. I don't, oh my God. Verse 9 of that passage said, That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. It's available to you. Turn to somebody and say, get your portion of light today. And while you're getting your portion, live. (laughs) What does light do? What does light do? It gives direction. The wise men follow starlight to get to the light of the world, Jesus. Everybody needs light for direction. It provides visibility. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6 says, For it is of, of the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You need visibility. Three, provides understanding. Psalms 119, 120. The entrance of your word gives light. It gives understanding. You don't understand, maybe you not in the light. But the entrance of his word brings light. Four, light indicates life in a different kingdom. Colossians 1, 12 through 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Your inheritance is in light. What's left for you, what's coming to you as an inheritance is in light. He has delivered us. Who? Us. How many? All of us. From the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. Where's that? In the light. He conveyed you. You didn't even have to walk in. What's a conveyor belt? You've been on them. Because you were at the airport and you didn't want to walk to that gate. So there was a little belt running along. And it pulled you closer to the gate. Well, that's what God has done getting you out of the darkness. He conveyed you with your no walking self into the light. (laughs) I'm almost done. Because y'all don't like this as much as I do. Jesus is the day spring. The light that came at Christmas that the world had never seen. It was the brightest light God ever produced. In the earth. And it came in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible says those who walked in darkness have seen a great light. 
Well, let me, let me, let me rewind back. Luke 1, 69, Jesus is the horn of salvation. He will save his people. That's the light. Luke 1, 71, Jesus saves us from our enemies. Thank you, Jesus. I don't have to fear. I've been saved from my enemy. Luke 1, 74, Jesus enables us to serve God without fear. I can come boldly before him without fear. Fear of rejection. Fear that he won't answer. Fear that he won't like me. Because I've been restored. You're in the light. This light is that day spring. The breaking of a new day out of darkness. The breaking of a new and living way. The breaking of, breaking of renewed hope. This Christmas come to know Jesus. The day spring. That's the light of Christmas. I put string after string on my Christmas tree. And I left to get something else, to get some more decorations, and I came back. And it was only one string lit up. And I was so mad, I had to snatch all of my stuff off the tree. And reconnect until I got to the ones where the light went out. And then I put them back around again. And then I walked away and did something else. And the whole tree went out again. And I started all over again reconnecting until I got to some raggedy lights that don't work. See, there's some lights you trust in. They don't work. There is a shortage in them. But you, you need to stay connected to the good light source. And his name is Jesus. He is the day spring of God. Blessings to you today. Walk in the light. Walk in the light today. Blessings to you today. Those who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Jesus is it. Give him a praise all over this room. Stay connected. <laughs> Stay connected and you'll never go out. If you're in a place where they're shortest, disconnect and reconnect. But stay connected to a good source. Stay connected to him. If you heard this word today, the Lord bless you. Give yourself to Jesus Christ. He is the day spring in the earth. He is the new light that that broke forth with hope with peace with a new and living way and he loves you today give him your heart give him your life we're at 4660 military on the corner of ratio in military in the city of Detroit come see us look us up find us We'll be glad to share the light with you and the love of the Lord with you. This Christmas, get in the light. Blessings to you. Put your hands together, give them a praise. Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.